tell you a story, and the story is about this thing called the science, the science to narrative chain. So for me to do it right, I need to set up a tiny animation studio in my bathroom over here. Okay. Okay. So what is the science to narrative chain? Well, let me tell you a story. This is my colleague Jessica Hua. For many years, that when you run an experiment, most of the time something will go wrong. She's running an experiment where every six hours she has to come in and check on these incubating frog eggs. She does this for weeks, and that is the science part of the science to narrative chain. Let me tell you another story. There were these humans named Adam and Eve, and they lived in a garden. And one day, they ate some fruit, and then they had to leave. Have you heard this story before? When was the first time you heard it? The best stories are the stories that get told by everyone. The stories that bury themselves so deep that everybody knows them. Knowing things, it takes hard work. You have to measure salt concentrations every six hours. And what you see is they are growing in different solutions that we created. Jessica spends weeks gathering her data and then she analyzes it and interprets it and then she writes a paper. Like this one. The contribution of phenotypic plasticity to the evolution of insecticide tolerance in amphibian populations, Jessica Hua. When I read this paper, I can learn in maybe an hour what it took Jessica weeks to discover. That's pretty cool, but the problem is that reading this paper still takes like an hour, and sometimes I don't have time for that. And besides that, in order to really understand all the nuts and bolts of this, you probably have to do some studying first. But what if somebody else could do that studying for you? The first step to the science to narrative chain is research. This is my little drawing of a scientist with a beaker and a magnifying glass. They're gathering data. This takes a long time, and when it's done, basically only the scientist knows what they learned. So the next step is to write a paper. Many people can read the paper. I don't know, maybe 50 or 100. Maybe if the paper is super influential, it can be read by 10,000 people maximum. And that's still way too small. So the next step in the science to narrative chain is videos. Making a video is hard work, just like gathering data is work and writing a paper is work. And every time that knowledge is worked on, it becomes more knowable by more people. Like, you might need some biology training to read this paper, but maybe not to watch a video about it. This YouTube channel is the home of the EVOS seminar series. What we're doing here is we're presenting you with all the links of the science to narrative chain in order. We host scientists who give talks about their work and we also post links to their paper, but then we take it one step further. We take their talks and we take their papers and we analyze them, interpret them, for you. You might not have time to watch the full seminar or read the entire paper, but you can definitely watch our summary videos and they should give you the gist. They should give you enough that you could tell what you learned to somebody else. The best stories are the ones that get told by everyone. So click subscribe if you want to be part of the chain.